St. Matthews. It is so wonderful to be here and praying with you. And I think there is no more holy way to begin a service than listening to Dr. Sung Park play the piano. This morning, we are so excited that you are joining us. The bulletin can be found either in your email that you got this week or uh, the link that you'll find in the chat box. We begin on page two, singing hymn number 537. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you let us pray give us grace O Lord to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and to proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, a day's walk. 
And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he, would, that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in exhortation. In robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. In you, God, alone our souls in silence wait, truly. Our hope is in you, who are our rock and our salvation, our stronghold, so that we will not be shaken. Amen. Okay, everyone. I am about to deliver, well, actually, I am about to repeat, probably the worst sermon in the history of sermons. The good news is, it won't take long. In the original Hebrew, it's just five words. And in most English translations, it's only eight. Forty days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's it. Notice there's no mention of God, 
no promise of forgiveness, no words of exhortation. And in if this very short sermon that actually feels more like a threat sounds familiar, it's because we just heard it a few minutes ago in this morning's Old Testament lesson from the book of Jonah. It just went by really fast. The worst sermon in the history of sermons that was preached by maybe the most reluctant preacher in the history of preachers. The most reluctant preacher and, without a doubt, one of the most effective. Because as a result of his preaching, we are told in the next verse that an entire city full of heathens believe God. So much so that God changes God's mind and does not destroy them. It's some story, right? which the Revised Common Lectionary in typical fashion has dropped us right down into the middle of. So let's rewind. Let's go back to the beginning. The book of Jonah is a short little book buried in the Old Testament between two other short little books called Obadiah and Micah. The title character is this unwilling prophet from Israel's northern kingdom. Out of the blue, God calls Jonah to go to Nineveh and cry out against the city because of their wickedness. God calls him to go and do that street corner preacher thing in the capital city of Assyria, the bloodthirsty empire immediately to the east that will eventually bring to a cruel end the kingdom of Israel. In other words, these are the last people that Jonah wants to go talk to. God calls, and Jonah runs, literally in the opposite direction. When he gets to Joppa, which is a port city on the coast of what is now Lebanon, he jumps on board a boat bound for Tarshish, which is way far to the west, further west than Italy. Well, Running from God doesn't work when God has a job God wants you to do. God sends this terrible storm, hurled a great wind, says the text, and all the sailors in the boat cry out to their gods to save them to no avail. Eventually, they come to Jonah thinking he just might be the problem. And he says, yeah, you got me. I'm running from God. You might want to throw me overboard because the chances are the weather will improve. Well, they don't really want to do that, but the storm keeps getting worse. And finally, they heave him out over the boat. And the sea ceases from its raging. And the sailors give thanks to Jonah's God for their deliverance. And Jonah gets swallowed whole by a whale, sent by God, of course. From the belly of said whale, Jonah, this preacher of very few words, offers up this beautiful lyrical prayer to God, whereupon the whale vomits him out onto dry land, which is where we catch up with him at the beginning of this morning's reading, with the word of the Lord coming to Jonah a second time. This time, Jonah obeys and goes grudgingly to those horrible people in Nineveh and preaches his awful sermon. His awful sermon that is somehow so effective that the Ninevites, all of them, believe God. They believe God, they proclaim a fast, everyone puts on sackcloth, and the king orders that all human beings and animals cry out mightily to God and turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands because, he says, the king says, who knows? God may relent and change God's mind. God may turn from fierce anger so that they might not all perish. The awful sermon has led to this astonishing repentance. The people of Nineveh repent, and then God repents. God doesn't send calamity on the city and if that isn't a stunning homiletical success, I don't know what is. But you would never know it from Jonah's reaction. 
He is not happy. He yells at God, this is why I didn't want to do this. This is why I fled. I knew, and this is a direct quote, that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow in anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. I just knew you were going to have mercy on those awful, sinful, violent, unworthy people. I just knew it. Just kill me now. I'd rather be dead. And then Jonah goes outside the city and pouts. Now there's more back and forth between him and God until God basically says, Jonah, you are just all about what I do for you, how you feel you are being treated, you who know me to be gracious. Should I not be concerned? Should I not also have some care for a city of over 120,000 people and all of their livestock who don't know their right hand from their left, who in other words are basically clueless? Oh, but it is so hard, isn't it, when God decides to be God's gracious self to people who we don't think deserve it. We want God's justice for those people and grace and mercy for ourselves. We who know God, we who are on the right side of whatever. And when we catch God forgiving and reconciling people who are flat out wrong, and when God suggests that we be part of that forgiveness and reconciliation, sometimes we do a Jonah. We pout. We don't want to go. Despite the fact that most of us, I suspect, have done our own versions of running in the opposite direction when God calls. It's a wonder God puts up with us. One of my favorite podcasts is Sermon Brainwave. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before. It's this weekly conversation between seminary professors about the text for the upcoming Sunday. One of the participants is a brilliant African-American woman named Joy Lewis. She said this past week, and I quote, this being gracious to people who are wrong or who don't deserve it is really what God is about. And I wish God weren't, which says more about me, I'm afraid. Jonah, without energy, without passion, out of obedience, but it takes a storm and a whale to get him there. Jonah cooperates with God's refusal to give up on Nineveh. God is determined to give that city and those people just one more chance. God is willing to take them and us back into grace. That is the good news, whether I want to proclaim it or not, and whether I want it to work on you or not. Dr. Lewis goes on to say, yours and my experience of the grace of God is not just for us. It's not just for our benefit. Our experience is also for others, meaning as we witness to that grace received, as we participate in its rippling out to places that we don't think it is appropriate or deserved. So, in the aftermath of recent events in our national life, whatever yours and my politics, I think we can probably connect the dots. There are no people and there is no place that can properly be called God forsaken. Whoever the ones are who are on the other side, however egregious we may think their wrongs, God loves them and God cares for them. God is invested in their well-being and their flourishing, and God's desire for them is wholeness 
and reconciled relationships, whether they know that or believe that or not. And God just might not smite them. What's more, God is calling you and me. God is calling us to be involved in that whole making and that reconciliation, in the mending of our tattered and worn social fabric, in the weaving together of what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. famously called the beloved community that seems like an incredibly naive dream. Now, if you are like me, you might be tempted to think that you don't have the tools, you don't have the skills, you don't have the strength or the capacity, or frankly, let's be honest, the desire to do this thing that God is asking of us. To go to your Nineveh and actually talk to the people who live there. And I am sure that none of us are particularly interested in being remembered like Jonah for preaching the worst sermon of all sermons. I, for one, am way too invested at being good at things. But if God can use that awful sermon by that most reluctant preacher, God can use you and God can use me. Truth to tell, it probably won't involve preaching, at least not preaching with words. Whatever proclamation we make will need to be very concrete, very durable, very much more than mere words. God can send us where we don't really want to go and leverage our feeble efforts, our seemingly too small acts of love and service to transform human hearts. Yes, my sisters and brothers, what looks to us to be our least can in fact be God's best. It can lead to God's best, to God's throwing out to just one more lifeline in a world that is so desperately in need. We need simply to be witnesses to the grace that we have already received, the grace that fished Jonah out of the drink and gave him one more chance, the grace and mercy that has already, already rescued every one of us. In the name of God who creates, who redeems, and sustains. Amen.
Today at 12.30, we will baptize three brand new Christians, Goose, Luca, and Zoe. And so being those who have decided to follow Jesus, let us renew our baptismal vows on page five of your worship bulletins. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third, third day, day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, I will with, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, I will with, with God's, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I, I will with, with God's, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow upon us the forgiveness of sins, and keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to God, who is made manifest in Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your Son, Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As a star rose high in the nighttime sky to draw the nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this nation and every nation, and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As John the Baptist guided throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness and baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, we pray that you would guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Like the Magi who traveled from afar to bring gifts and celebrate the Savior's birth, we pray for this community and for those who celebrate their own birthdays and anniversaries, especially the wedding anniversaries of Bob and Rosie Strickland, Stu and Rochelle Work, and Kristen Barbaria's 30th anniversary of her ordination. We also give thanks for the baptisms later today of Zoe May Boyce, Luca Norman Lynch, Gustav Magnus Leonard Vick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus climbed the mountaintop, and proclaim blessings on the people of the world. We pray for the sick and the distressed, the poor and the lame. We especially pray for Bob and Evelyn Folks, Bronwyn, Anne Fromholz, Allie, Chad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus called his disciples to leave their nets and boats and follow him. We pray for those we love and who have answered your call 
to follow Jesus to your heavenly kingdom. Especially Deborah Rohde, Michael Farkas, Dolores King Williams, for Harriet Green, for Scott, mother of Elizabeth Keating, for Leon Rucker. Give them your peace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayers and make us reflections of your light, that the places of darkness in our world would be pierced by your light, and that all nations would be drawn to you and be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name, thy thy kingdom kingdom come, come. Thy will will be be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is sensational to have you here this morning, to hear the worst sermon ever, and to participate in the worship and shared worship of the whole community this morning. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, especially, uh, I want to shout out to those who have been, the many who have been participating in the women's retreat this last weekend, and all of you who have faithfully been tuning in to us online. Um, This morning, um, the focus of our announcements is about what's happening next week. Um, It is uh, our annual meeting, and uh, we have uh, some very specific um, actions we would like you to take. But first, could you um, hang in there and watch this promo for next week? I hope you enjoyed that video as much as we enjoyed watching Missy giggle about putting it together. Um, uh, So I'm going to read a couple of things about annual meeting because there's a couple of specific actions I really need you to consider um, as we prepare for annual meeting next week. Uh, This year's meeting obviously will be virtual and it'll be on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And at one point during the meeting, we're actually going to be voting on the nominees for Vestry. Um, You will have the chance to submit your vote online during that 9 a.m. service, 9 a.m. service and annual meeting, which is folded into it. To do this, we must ensure that we have a quorum of eligible voters, so please, please help us by submitting an RSVP for the meeting. Um, uh, You can do this right now by clicking on the RSV link in your chat box or on in Thursday's uh, Carillon. Understand this is a canonical thing in order to make our voting um, legal. It's not exactly the right word, legal, and, um, but your cooperation will be very much appreciated so that we can make sure that we are um, emphasizing that there are, are certain ways that we raise up ministers and leaders in this community. 
Um, and next week, uh, please be sure to tune in to our 9 o'clock live stream. And uh, what having annual meeting during the 9 a.m. live stream service means is there will be no patio Eucharist next week at 1030. No Eucharist. So do just join us online if you could. Uh, thank you for all of you who participate in all the various events of our parish, for reaching out to those who are uh, alone or those who um, could um, really participate and enjoy um, a human, uh, the sound of a human voice or touch at this point. We're incredibly grateful for all your support. Um, if you have not made a 2021 pledge, please do so um, as soon as you can um, as we attempt to try to um, pull our, our church through this time period. Thank you very much. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to offer, the fruit of our labor and of the skill you have given us. Take us and our possessions to do your work in the world. Amen. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. And now let us sing together the closing hymn number 408. <laughs>